Mm. Just needed a minute to recollect my thoughts. And I beat the McDonald's drive through line, which is very difficult to do at our McDonald's because they're very fast. So I felt this overwhelming, like, push to share this. Um, you know, it's real easy to share the good, easy things in our life. And when everything's going well, and people like that, you know, it's like, oh, so-and-so's cute. That light is not doing a lot for my chubby chin. Um, but it's hard to share when things are hard. And I, I try to, but I don't always share everything about being hard. Because I, I want to give Amos his privacy, I think, in a way that I didn't really know about when he was little. But um, this last night, we realized he was scared of the fire alarm at school. And this morning at school, they said, you know, we made sure he wasn't in the building during the fire alarm. And so I belong to a nine-year-old who is so filled with anxiety because of just talking about the alarms. So he wasn't there for the alarm. Just the talking about it has put him into a total tailspin. Um, so last night he got really upset because he wanted to go to Planet Fitness. We've never been to a Planet Fitness. We don't go to Planet Fitness. And when I say really upset, I mean hitting himself, uh, kicking, like you're trying to protect him from himself and trying to make sure his arms don't go through a glass pane door. I mean, a big deal. And so Last night I slept with him. I thought, okay, I'm gonna sleep with him all night. So he just feels me right beside him. So normally he comes and gets me about 1 a.m. So I sit there. He doesn't sleep from like one to five. And finally I said, just get up and watch TV. So I didn't sleep, which is, which is the root of all evil, not sleeping and then having an IEP meeting is a bad combo. And so then this morning, or the plan was last night, my husband and I, you know, we were talking about this and I said, you take him to school, I'll take the big kids to school. So got him up, got him dressed, got his medicine, went up on a dose of his medicine after messaging with his pediatric psychiatrist at Duke last night, um, who said, we can go up on this or we can try this. So I said, well, I'll just go ahead and go up on it today while we decide. He's had breakfast. He's ready to go. Well, I get a call from my husband. So all, that's what this week has felt like. I just, the calls, waiting. I'm anxious about the calls coming. Like right now, I'm waiting for the school to call me, you know, and tell me they need me or they don't know what to do. And I don't know what to do either. That's the thing. Like, there's this thought that like, well, what do you do? what the fuck? I don't know what to do. I mean, I have no more idea than you do. I do know him well. I mean, I know what doesn't work. Like when people are like, Amos, you know, no, that does not work. He's not going to be fooled by anybody. Um, but I don't know what to do. I mean, my initial thought was just take his ass back home, but I have an IEP meeting at 1030 and I have work to do today. And Oh, so anyway, so my husband calls me and um, says he's broken the TV. He broke something else. I've got him in the car at school. I cannot get him out of the car, which is exactly what I had yesterday. And he's and Amos, you know, Amos hears me on speakerphone and says, Mommy, I'm sorry I broke the TV. And that made me that made me feel so bad for him. And I just told Thomas, I talked, he just called a minute ago. I said, you know, he didn't want to break the TV. He just, he doesn't know what to do with all these feelings and he can't communicate. Yes. Yeah, so last night he told us something along the lines of, I wrote the quote down, the alarm's coming and you're going to have to get out of there. And, um, so, Thomas can't get him out of the car. And there was this part of me. I said, well, what do you, 
what do you want me to do? <laughs> he was like, I don't know. <laughs> There's really something pretty humbling about having a nine-year-old that you can't get out of the freaking car at school. And, you know, we've had three other nine-year-olds. We never had trouble getting them out of the car. Um, and we had the transition at the beginning of school was, was hard, but in a regular way, hard, you know, not like this. So I go to school. Hi, mommy. Or he's in the car with Thomas. I get him out of the car. I get him into school. We go in the library and get Legos. And then Miss Bonner, who we love, came in there with him and I left. It has to be hard on the marriage. You know, no, it's not. I know people say that it is, but it's not. I think we both love Amos more than anybody. And if anything, it strengthens our marriage. I mean, life is full of stress. So no, it's not. That's not. That's for us at least. Um, so then I leave him. I'm hoping that, you know, it's fine. I have to be back out there at 1030. And my husband calls and says, what time's the IP meeting? I said, it's 1030. He said, I'm going to come. You know, he's never been to an IEP meeting and not because he doesn't care, but I never, I never once told him he should come. Like my PhD is in educational research. The IEP stuff is mine. I've just, it's always been what I've done. And I said to him last night, you know, I think it would be helpful for you to be there. And, um, it's hard for him to get away. So anyway, so he's going to go, which is really nice. And, um, we never have all right, it's not, a lot of people will say like we have conflict and they take lawyers, like my, our IEP meetings are not like that. I feel 130% confident that the school wants Amos to do as well. Individualized education plan is what an IEP meeting is. Um, so I don't have any of those feelings. I don't have none. All I know is that everybody there wants exactly what I want. We just don't know how to do it. And then you have a week like this that you're like, crap. You know, then it, the alarm thing makes me think, well, is it medicine? He's freaking out over talking about the alarm. They've been talking about the alarm for years and it hadn't done him in. I don't know. Um, so anyway. I'm going to go home and get ready for the meeting and go through some old stuff. And people are like, I want to give you a hug. I can tell you if somebody tried to hug me right, right now, I might like kick them in the teeth like Amos. I'm really not into being touched when I'm struggling. <laughs> FYI. And you know, I will tell you if you have a friend like me and she's struggling or he's struggling all you have to do is listen. You don't have to, nothing else. You can just say, boy, that's hard. That's what a friend of mine said this morning. Boy, that's hard. Um, you don't, don't try to make it better. It doesn't need to be worse. Just let the person be. Um, and if you see me later today, I, don't hug me and I'll be fine. But I think what I'm trying to model is that you can have really, really big feelings and that it's important to share them so that they don't own you, you know? And so if I sit and swallow all that hurt or I go home and cry by myself, then it's not doing me a favor. It's not doing the world a favor. Nobody really knows what to do. And I feel like it's so important that I use these feelings for good, right? So that you do know, um, you know, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like sad all day. Like, that's not me. I don't do that. I talk about it and let it go. 
Who you need to worry about is the people that aren't talking about it and aren't letting it go and are drowning on the inside, you know? I'm like you, don't hug me. Don't hug me. That's the biggest advice you're going to get today. <laughs> and if you, if you need a soft place to fall, I have a subscriber group. And, um, you know, this is the kind of stuff we, we have hard conversations in there. Um, and it's a safe place to have hard conversations. Not sometimes the big old internet is not helpful. Um, so anyway. Thank y'all and have a good, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that it's Thursday. 